All right. I hope you all had a nice coffee break. Um, it was also a short break, uh, but we have still a lot of very interesting um, inputs ahead. We are now turning this afternoon's discussion, this afternoon's policy table uh, to a second topic uh, related, of course, uh, to the question of how to bring uh, SMEs across Europe into innovative uh, projects. In the second part of the afternoon, we would like to focus uh, on the question of combining public and private funding to support innovation projects. We have identified this topic as a second big potential that is uh, out there and that can be strengthened uh, in the future for SMEs to help them uh, really uh, make the best out of the innovation opportunities uh, that are available uh, on the markets. And I'm really looking forward to discussing this topic with a great uh, set of uh, experts on the panel. Before we get to the panel, and I will introduce all the speakers of the panel uh, later on, I have uh, the pleasure and the honor uh, to introduce uh, to, to you Ms. Valérie Rocher-Belin. Uh, I hope that was correct. <laughs> um, uh, Ms. Uh, Rocher Moulin is uh, Secretary General of uh, uh, Région uh, Sud Invest and will give uh, the 15 minutes keynote on the topic uh, of how to combine public and private funding to support innovation projects from the perspective of Région Sud Invest. Please, uh, Ms. Uh, Rocher Moulin, the floor is yours and I'm very happy uh, to have you here as a keynote speaker. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Michael, and um, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I would like to, to thank you uh, for this opportunity to, to present uh, Région Sud Investissement. Um, we created this uh, fund uh, 10 years ago. Uh, we had an opportunity to create it with the European Fund, so the ERDF um, Fund. And we started uh, small, actually. We started with uh, 12 million uh, euros just to see uh, how we could uh, help uh, SMEs to get uh, public and uh, private funding. So um, now, uh, 10 years later, we have uh, found uh, quite successful with 136 million euros. And uh, we found uh, 100 SMEs in the south south area um, so we provide uh, of course equity funds to local companies from innovative seed capital to growth capital um, the major asset of uh, our portfolio is uh, ip uh, when, when we started uh, we were um, uh, financing only uh, innovative companies uh, but then uh, we decided to also um, found um, uh, more growth uh, companies and not only uh, in innovative companies, but uh, industrial companies or uh, services companies. Um, we are the first regional equity fund in, uh, in France in terms of, uh, of size and volume of operation because 10 years ago, uh, many funds in, in different uh, regions uh, were created on the same uh, structure as uh, we did. Um, and uh, we'll see that later, but uh, we have co-invested so far with more than 100 partners. Uh, and uh, our investment is uh, 66 million euros. So when I, started, I was telling Mathilde that uh, I was alone in the in the fund, but now we are uh, five people. And uh, as you will see later, we are working with um, with a regional fund, a well well known one, which is Turin uh, Capital. I will explain later. Uh, could you please? Confirm that you, you hear me, please. I'm not sure it's working. Unfortunately, I'm also informed, and on my side, I also have problems that there is a, a, a quite a serious audio problem. Okay, so, um... what I would propose, I am really sorry about this. Uh, uh, apologies to the participants, apologies to you, uh, Miss uh, uh, Roger Munin. What I would suggest is that we um, jump to the panel. I introduce the panelists. 
And in the meantime, if you can try to fix the audio connection, uh, maybe connect to a smartphone, hotspot on the smartphone. That's what I usually do because the smartphone connection is uh, sometimes better than what we have in our offices. Uh, okay, then you okay, will be sure. back on the panel and I will, I promise to give you the opportunity to finish what you wanted to say and to give your conclusion uh, on these uh, issues later on on the panel. Do you agree okay, with no this? Problem. I, 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 I'm going to connect uh, with another way, so uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so sorry. much and I'm really sorry. sorry about that and apologies also to uh, the attendees. Uh, the parts of your presentations that I uh, picked up were uh, really interesting and this is a topic that I'm uh, passionate about uh, also because uh, we tend to forget when talking about SMEs and innovation and SMEs role in innovation and transnational innovation, uh, we tend to forget that there is actually more out there than just uh, public funded support uh, programs. The stage where we need to get uh, to public funded support programs uh, is a stage uh, where uh, we need to justify that other solutions, market-driven solutions, are actually not possible uh, because of market failures, externalities, a uh, whole lot of uh, different reasons that make it difficult for SMEs to actually get into uh, these type of projects and these type uh, of um, uh, in investments. But the stage uh, where the state or state-funded programs kick in need to be very well justified. Uh, I'm an economist by training and I know uh, that it is um, um, very dangerous if the first idea that we have, if we see uh, a problem um, uh, out there, if we want more innovation, if our first reflex uh, is becoming uh, to try and find public support programs, this is in many cases not the most efficient solution. And therefore the topic of thinking about in a more structured, more comprehensive way about how to combine these possibilities where they are actually needed because of market failures with what is available on the market with private equity that is out there to support and invest into SMEs that want to engage into innovative products, into strategic transformation processes and so on and so forth, is something that is really very close uh, to my scientific uh, interest. And therefore, I'm more than happy that we now have the opportunity to discuss this uh, with our distinguished uh, panelists and I will introduce uh, briefly the panelists and kindly ask them to switch on uh, the cam uh, camera while uh, I present them. So first of all uh, we do have Mr. Uh, Arndt uh, Upfold. Uh, he's the deputy head of the unit uh, startups at the uh, Ministry of Economics, uh, Labour and Housing in Baden Württemberg. Uh, welcome, Mr. Upfold. A pleasure to have you uh, on the panel. We do have, I see already with the cam switched on, Mr. Uh, Michael Kerschbaumer uh, of the uh, um, Economic Promotion Agency of uh, Steiermark, Stei Steirische Wirtschaftsförderungs. Agentur, if I uh, got it right, uh, welcome uh, Michael Kerschbaumer. Uh, we also have a cam switched on uh, by uh, two participants from Veneto Svilupo, uh, Mr. Marco Rampin and Ms. Alessandra Baldan from Veneto Svilupo, uh, responsible for uh, the section uh, incentives and credit uh, area within uh, Veneto Svilupo, so uh, the regional um, development agency of Veneto region in Italy. And last but not least, we have a fellow Swiss uh, on the panel. Uh, it is my great pleasure to also welcome Mr. Stefan uh, Fischer. Mr. Mr. Stefan uh, Fischer is the uh, Swiss national contact point for SMEs at Uresearch. Uh, great pleasure to have you with us. So as you know, the topic here is to uh, get some kind of overview again in the same structure about status quo, challenges and solutions in having a better combination of public and private funding for SMEs that want to engage in innovation projects. And I know that all of you have different perspectives uh, on this topic and I would like to give you now uh, in the first round the opportunity uh, to present what uh, your institutions uh, are doing in this field uh, how do you, uh, with your institutions, uh, actually promote the combination of public and private funding uh, for SMEs in innovation? 
ventures. And I would like to start uh, because geographically it's the closest uh, to me uh, with our uh, Swiss uh, representative, uh, Mr. Uh, Stefan Fischer. Very interested to learn more about what is going on uh, in this field at uh, your research. Yeah, first of all, I'm the national contact point for, for SMEs uh, and we consult uh, basically uh, applicants uh, that are interested in the uh, EIC Accelerator uh, program. That's that's my my uh, uh, job and we have other NCPs uh, working for other domains. Now, the, the, the interesting thing with the EIC Accelerator is that it is a publicly funded instrument that also includes equity financing. And this is a new thing um uh, that hasn't uh, uh well it has been tried out before in the so-called eic accelerator pilot in horizon 2020 and now applicants are basically um, um request or required to 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 ask for an equity financing part so that is new that an, the public funding agency actually owns uh equity uh and compared to to venture capital this type of equity is um uh, has advantages it's a long-term investment and the eu fund which owns the actually the the um, um equity is not uh, interfering too much in the, with the daily business so so that's the the the, uh, the new thing and um uh, we'll see how how uh, that goes and what we are struggling right now is uh switzerland and uh, uh, while we want to be associated with Horizon Europe, we'll see there are currently negotiations. We will see, we will know more at the end of this year. Currently, uh, applicants are applying for that that instruments and for for the other instruments as as they are published, and uh, we'll see uh, how uh, successful Swiss applicants will be. Maybe just a very short uh, uh, follow-up question uh, from from your experience so far. Uh, do you have the impression that the uh, interest from the side of SMEs is uh, is high for this new instrument? Uh, is it something that has been communicated broadly and you can feel a, a strong yes, it, demand it, for this? Yeah, there is a strong demand. Um, uh, we could do better. Uh, we could uh, communicate more. There are some some uh, SMEs who simply don't know about these funding opportunities. Uh, there is some some uh, uh, potential to improve our our uh, outreach. Uh, not only in Switzerland, but in, in, in general. Um, so uh, we, there's some work to be done. Thank you. Thank you for this concise uh, uh, overview and the uh, hint to this uh, uh, EIC accelerator uh, program combining um, public, fu public funds with equity. I think this is something that we will have the opportunity to discuss also with the other participants. Uh, Mr. Uh, Upfold, uh, the perspective of uh, Baden-Württemberg, what uh, is going on uh, in the field of combining public and private in your daily business? Well, first of all, hello to, to all. It's a pleasure to see so many colleagues from our European neighbors. Uh, it's always a pleasure, especially uh, at the moment in this pandemic situation. Well, what's to say uh, from Stuttgart, Southwest Germany? Um, well, if you think about Southwest Germany, if you think, of, think about the state of Baden-Württemberg, you might think about Bosch, you think about Mercedes, you think about SAP and a lot of small and mid-sized companies we have in Southwest Germany. But you normally don't think um, about, or don't know us as a startup hotspot. And I think we are not the only region that, uh, that has this problem that you are not so visible as a startup region uh, compared to major cities like Berlin, like Vienna, for example, Paris, London, and so on. So we started with uh, our campaign startup, uh, VW. It's, uh, first of all, an umbrella brand to bring it all together. What we do for startups in the state of Baden-Württemberg, and we also uh, started some new programs and initiatives. And, um, well, even before our campaign, we, we have um, subsidized loans, we have public guarantees, and we also have uh, public venture capital funds. But uh, we saw a gap um, between, in the very very early uh, phase of, um, um, of startups in the pre-seed um, uh, situation, because uh, if you want to uh, get a funding, you need, normally you need a proof of concept, you need a traction. But to make a prototype, to, to go to the market, you need first money. And so we start to, to close this gap with our new program. It's called Startup BW Pre-Seed. And it's a combination. Technically, it's a grant 
that you have to pay back. It works more like a convertible loan. And uh, there, there are two things added to the program. First of all, you need a 20% co-investment from a private co-investor. And you need a recommendation from one of our startup accelerators. And uh, accelerators are also impo um, important because they yeah, coach the startups, they supervise the startups, and there also can be a, a moderator, a mediator between the corporates and the startups. Because we often see the big companies like Mercedes have their own facilities, but the small companies sometimes need, need a moderator between, between these both worlds, so to say. And the co-investor can have um, uh, can can convert it into shares. He can get a 20% discount. But it's not so much that they want to earn money. We see a lot of corporates in the program who are more interested to make pilot products, uh, and we give them a safe situation. We take 80% of the risk of the first financing round. Uh, our aim is to make them financing ready. We don't want to be the first investor. We want to make them investment ready. And the private co-investor has to pay 20%. To give you a number, we have now at the moment around about 130 startups in the pre-seed program. Uh, plus, we, we opened the program during the corona pandemic uh, now for older startups to bridge the situation in the mo a moment. Uh, there we have another around about 130 startups. So our portfolio at the moment is 250 startups. And we see a lot of corporates, a lot of small and mid-sized corporate companies who are co-investors with 20%. Average ticket size is 200,000 euros, 160,000 public, around 40,000 private. All right, sounds like a great startup region, uh, Baden-Württemberg, even if you uh, say that you still have uh, that you're still struggling with actually getting the visibility compared to other regions, but it's great to uh, learn uh, what is going on just a bit north from uh, where we are sitting uh, now. Uh, let me turn uh, for the first round uh, to Michael uh, uh, Kerschbaumer, uh, to Steiermark. What is uh, uh, your institution's uh, role? Ah, well, hello and welcome. Um, yeah, I'm from Styria, that's uh, southeast in Austria, Graz probably the least well-known city in Austria, unfortunately, or fortunately, low tourists, low prices. Great for startups. They can actually afford to rent uh, rooms here. Uh, let me go back uh, first to, to Stefan's uh, remark on the EIC. Uh, I think what's very important about the EIC to know is that's a very elite program. Only high-tech and deep, deep tech companies can actually be successful there. And You've been very modest in your statement. Switzerland is one of the most successful countries in the EAC. You realize that, right? We've we've been looking at you with envy, uh, seeing how you how you how you did a great job there. So really, congratulations. Um, Thank you. When it comes to co combining funding, uh, public funding, and private investment, uh, I think one of the the, the major Issues there are that many uh, many of our SMEs or startups are they're ready to get public funding, but they're not yet ready to really face uh, investors, private investors. And we've we've seen that. And and what we did there is we uh, we have now a funding program, an actual funding program to make uh, startups investor ready. So what we give them. Uh, about a hundred thousand euros uh, for company building as a as a grant for company building and finishing an MVP, uh, for example. So uh, and then uh, also coaching, so that they are then ready to face an investor. Because that's that has been our our experience in the past that they're yeah they they're not they're not really ready. They don't really know what it means to face a, a public. A public investor and in combination with that we've also have uh, like we've seen from from Valerie um, and now now from Arndt um, a program where we can co-invest with private business angels or investors in in the seed phase um, as well as then in an expansion phase so I, I guess we're trying to to tackle all the the issues around getting ready to invest and then also helping private investors to share the risk uh, with public 
uh, with these programs that we're having here. Thank you very much for this uh, Austrian introduction and uh, thank you also for the compliments uh, to Switzerland. I will then have a follow-up question to Mr. Fischer uh, based on this compliment. But first, I would like to turn to uh, our colleagues from uh, Veneto, uh, Mr. Rambin uh, and Ms. Baldan um, from uh, Veneto Sviluppo. Uh, what, is, uh, what, is your, what are your activities uh, in this field? Okay, good afternoon and thank you for the invitation. Uh, Veneto Sviluppo is uh, the financial intermediary of the Veneto region. The company profile is composed by Veneto region participating uh, with 51% uh, and the rest are the most relevant banks of our territory. So the company profile itself is a combination of private and public entities. And uh, for this reason in this panel we try to share with you our best practices on how to combine private and public um, funding to support uh, projects. Uh, the mission of Veneto Sviluppo is to facilitate the growth of the regional economic system, implement the economic policy uh, of uh, Veneto region with specific financial instruments for small and medium enterprises on our territory, and in general to um, improve the access to credit for small and medium enterprises of Veneto region. The activities uh, we do are is to manage financial uh, facilitations uh, above all in the form of uh, revolving funds and guarantees and we can grant just facilitating loans or mixed with contributions uh, for the revolving funds uh, everything starts with the assignation of resources by Veneto region uh, for specific funds and um, to have a facilitation uh, an enterprise goes to a bank and ask for a loan and uh, the, the, the most important banks are authorized to work with us with specific agreements. The bank uh, analyzes the enterprise rating and then support uh, the, the enterprise applying to Veneto Sviluppo for a favorable uh, financing. Veneto Sviluppo, after having concluding, com completed the assessment, uh, admits to benefits and uh, gives the bank uh, uh, the regional resources uh, at zero interest uh, and in the mixed form uh, also the capital grant. The bank uh, dispenses these uh, resources, this funding to the SME and uh, the enterprise received uh, the funding and eventually in the mixed form also the, uh, capital, um, the capital grant. Then uh, reimburses the capital of the loan and only the interest for the bank quote. And um, the, the interest is uh, negotiated up to a maximum uh, fixed by law. The bank gradually restores the resources, uh, transferring them uh, to Veneto Sviluppo. So Veneto Sviluppo finally is uh, able to manage the regional resources for new operations uh, waiting for these resources. Uh, and uh, during these years, uh, we managed uh, many of these uh, revolving funds uh, with the resources allocating in different areas uh, industry commerce um, tourism agriculture women young people also energy and uh, also for innovation for innovative investments uh, with an action of the uh, regional operational program and this is our business Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Alessandra. Uh, I have the pleasure to inform you that uh, Ms. Jose Meran is, uh, is back with us. Uh, so before going to the second round uh, of discussion, uh, I would like to give uh, Ms. Jose Meran the opportunity to conclude what she wanted to say in the introduction. But uh, before giving uh, the floor back to her, uh, let me just uh, give an input uh, for all the panelists to pre prepare on uh, how this will uh, continue. We have heard from the different um, uh, perspectives. There are a lot of solutions out there, similarly as in the first panel. Uh, it is possible uh, for SMEs uh, uh, to, uh, um, uh, to get uh, um, equity uh, investment and even in programs that combine this uh, with uh, other pu uh, public funding uh, sources. 
So the question is, is all good? Uh, is everything that is needed for these SMEs uh, there? Or uh, do you still identify uh, challenges? Uh, do you still think that uh, improvements uh, need to be done over the next years? Recommendations on how this can be uh, strengthened uh, in the future uh, to uh, create a better um, situation for SMEs uh, in their innovation activities. So this will be the general questions uh, to you. Mr. Kerschbaumer has also already hinted uh, on someone um, accusing the EIC or challenging the EIC uh, uh, program as being elitist and actually uh, only available for the really uh, elite uh, SMEs. Uh, so I, I would then uh, like to start and enter the second round with this direct uh, follow-up question to Mr. Fisher. Uh, is this true? If it is true, what to do for uh, the less elite uh, SMEs that uh, could also benefit uh, from something like that? And then give the question, of course, also to the other panelists. First, uh, welcome back, Ms. Roger Melin. The floor is yours for your uh, concluding uh, remarks that you could not give before. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, can you confirm your, you, you can hear me well? Is Perfect. it okay? No. Yes. Okay, so sorry for the connection. Uh, I wasn't aware of the bad uh, connection. So I'm so sorry. Um, okay, uh, so about uh, the public and private funding, I think the, 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 the funding, the public funding uh, can be can be found. Uh, the key here is uh, the access to this uh, public funding, because sometimes um, when we talk to uh, SMEs in uh, the South region, they think it's kind of hard to, to access to uh, this public funding, um, especially if it's uh, European uh, funding, because uh, you know that uh, the follow-up uh, is quite uh, difficult, it takes some time. So um, with our funds, it's easier for them. So we can uh, provide uh, equity and uh, we are dealing actually, we, we do the follow up with uh, the ERGF. So the companies uh, don't have to do it. So that's quite uh, interesting, I think. Um, and another figure is uh, maybe the leverage um, effect. When the, the when we invest one euro in a company, it's uh, eight euros in uh, the uh, uh, capital of the company. Uh, because, uh, thanks to the ERGF, uh, thanks to the private investment, and thanks to the loan that uh, the company can get uh, to uh, BP France or uh, other banks. And uh, the next thing I wanted to to tell you uh, is uh, the importance of uh, partnership. Uh, so we have uh, made, uh, we have signed a lot of uh, partnership agreements, uh, starting with the uh, Rising Sud, of course, but also with uh, accelerators, incubators, um, to help uh, the companies and to support the companies after our own uh, uh, deals. And um, and that's it. I think well, I don't know if you heard me, but uh, we made uh, seven exits so far. So uh, it's quite good and um, um, at, at your disposal if you have any question on the way we built this uh, public fund with private investment. Wonderful. We heard you perfectly well. Uh... Thank you so much uh, for the inputs and thank you also for being available now uh, for the rest of, of the panel to discuss uh, uh, the challenges and what can be done in the future to uh, even get to a, a better situation. So as I have uh, said, I would like to start the second round again with uh, 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 my fellow Swiss uh, on the panel here, Mr. Fisher. Uh, what are the challenges, what needs to be done in the future and specifically is EIC elitist? Well, before before uh, understanding why, if it's elitist or not, uh, let me quickly t say a few words about why why is Switzerland is so successful. Then it may be interesting for you, and and this is only on my 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 view of of things. So first of all, many of the the uh, startups actually are founded by uh, by uh, or, or uh, not not only Swiss. There are Germans, French. Uh, uh, entrepreneurs, Italian entrepreneurs, that all somehow meet in in Switzerland and and uh, start companies. Uh, and it's not uh, government funding because uh, direct government funding is is, is there's no legal, uh, um, let's say, foundation for government government funding for companies. And so what 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 else is there? I mean, the the uh, we have these these excellent schools, the ETH and the ETH Zurich and the ETH Lausanne. 
and we have uh, huge uh, technology parks and and uh, whenever I got phone calls, I know immediately. Well, it's either uh, from from Lausanne or Zurich. So so there are other universities that 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 create a startup. So we have a, a in addition to that um, um, a startup uh, community that is very lively and very active. So um, uh, having said that. Uh, uh, does that really uh, is, is does it uh, leave something to be improved? Oh yes, uh, um, I, I I often uh, struggle with 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 applicants. They they don't understand their, how to protect their IP. Uh, they they have uh, uh, also um, um, difficulties approaching investors. They simply don't know the, the process. They are very not very familiar with that. Nobody teaches them how to. Uh, well, there, there is there, there are uh, there is training and and coaching and 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 pitch training. InnoSwiss is an organization that that uh, provides that. But still, uh, this needs need to, to be learned and it takes some time. So so um, uh, maybe maybe this 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 uh, pitching and understanding how how financial instruments work this is lacking and this can be improved. I'm I'm sure. Now, is it is the ERC accelerator an elite program? Yes and no. Uh, yes, because and only only a, a fraction of the uh, uh, um, application and the proposals uh, succeed. Um, uh, no, because uh, um, there are companies, uh, and and I'm sometimes surprised myself that succeed, and uh, because they have a they have a long term vision, they are convincing, they have the right team, and it, they don't look like elite, but they have a solid foundation. They have uh, solid uh, IP and and uh, solid uh, products or services. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fisher. Also, very interesting insights uh, into uh, what makes Switzerland actually successful in this and bridges a bit the gap also to the uh, discussion that we had on the first panel, the meeting of different international um, uh, stakeholders uh, working together in this case on the territory of Switzerland with the, with the great uh, technical federal schools that we have and the uh, innovation ecosystems uh, surrounding uh, this. Something certainly to take up as a recommendation also uh, for the future. Um, but let me turn to uh, Mr. Uh, Upfold uh, for the question of, uh, of identified challenges and ideas for the future from your perspective. And uh, while you uh, turn on your microphone. I also inform you that we have many questions from the audiences, uh, from the audience. So I'm looking forward to getting back uh, to this and maybe the panelists can also take a look at the chat. You should have access and uh, already see if there are questions for you. Mr. Upfold. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, first of all, uh, two years ago, we went to Graz uh, and visited some of your accelerators there. And we know in Austria, especially also in Graz, you, you do a great job. And we also know the ETH uh, in Zurich, of course. And so I don't think there's much I can tell you how to do the job. So I want to give you maybe another kind of idea. I'm now responsible for, responsible for, for around about 20 years uh, for creating and running promotion uh, programs for startups and for SMEs. In these 20 years, I, I saw two kinds of programs. Uh, on the one hand side, we have grants, money you spend, and it's gone. Hopefully, it, you have a national economic uh, payback, or you have uh, venture capitals, you have loans. And normally, uh, these programs are benchmarked that no money is lost. And in my point of view, there's a wide space in between where you can act and to come back to our startup bw program i really was very keen to make this program a lot of um, colleagues in my ministry said hey aunt you are completely weird to try something in between uh, we calculate that we will lose around about 50 percent of the money because we are really very early we are really very pre-seed but we want the money back if the success we want it back but we, we really take the risk to, uh, to, to lose money and um, so this would be my input to think about uh, between traditional I would say venture capital and traditional grants to combine both worlds but you need a, uh, a support you need backing from from your from your from your head of office from the politics to to do this and so far 250 startups uh, we saw uh, now 10 exit although the corona pandemic uh, so far 
we lost only one startup, so we are still on track. So we, at the moment, we are still better than 50%. But we started this program about two years ago, so it's too early uh, really to say if uh, our plan works. But yeah, th this is my input uh, or my thesis. Uh, I think between classic grant and classic, so to say, banking business, there's a lot of space to create innovative programs. Yes. If you, are, uh, if you want to take the risk. <laughs> yes, this is actually also my uh, impression that there is uh, some uh, blank space uh, in between that uh, can be filled. And uh, uh, some of the inputs that we have heard uh, are actually giving uh, uh, certain elements on how to how to fill that. Uh, but you're mentioning an important point. There are uh, risks involved in that. And so if you say that uh, we're not here to learn from you, uh, well, uh, of course we are uh, here to learn from you because I think that your experience uh, uh, shows uh, really good practice uh, on how uh, this risk can be taken and how uh, it can be dealt uh, with this risk. Uh, so um, I'm sure that other regions will also be very interested in know, uh, knowing more about uh, how you have uh, succeeded uh, in this. But before coming back to this, I would like to give the opportunity to Mr. Uh, Kerfbaumer uh, to comment uh, uh, on upcoming challenges and what your ideas are uh, to uh, improve the situation in the future. And maybe you have seen it already in the chat. There's a specific question to you uh, asking uh, whether you have um, uh, with your experience uh, working uh, with SMEs, whether your organization is actually um, uh, giving a specific training to SMEs uh, for uh, programs such as the uh, EIC uh, Accelerate, because this seems to be something that uh, uh, there is demand for uh, in, in the future. Yeah, thank you. And yes, we do that. Uh, we give special training. This is why we're looking uh, full of envy to Switzerland or Ireland or Israel uh, and their success because we're doing a lot and we don't seem to be that successful. Um, but yes, what do we do there uh, in principle? We, we go three stages. First, we try to find out whether the company is good enough uh, in order to, to have a chance to be successful in the EIC. Uh, and then we we help them uh, to formulate the story around the the, the proposal. Uh, we do a proposal check, and before they're invited to Brussels, we give them a, a pitching training. So that's but this is coordinated within Austria as well. So we work together with the NCP in in Vienna and all the other colleagues from the Enterprise Europe Network uh, throughout Austria. Um, but let, let me come to your to the second question. What can we do uh, to improve? And um, Anne said something about in between. We need to go in between. Um, and yeah, you're completely right. But I think there's another uh, another target group of people that could provide money that are not really targeted yet. And I'm I'm talking about these. Uh, for Austria, rich people. For Switzerland, semi-rich people. Uh, you know, that have about 100, 150,000 euros to spend. Um, and they're, they're, not really, they're not really investors, but they have this money. And, uh, and there are quite a few people there uh, that, that would like to invest in companies. And they have too much money to invest in crowd investments and stuff. So uh, the idea could be, because I've been approached by, by some of these people, uh, to set something up like that, so that's where the idea comes from, to like collect these people in a kind of a, they're not really business angels, they're just people who want to invest money, and our public organizations could probably be some kind of uh, filter or agent for, for these people to help them choose what companies to invest in. And small ticket sizes, uh, sharing, Sharing risk. So, want 20 people invest 10,000 euros in, in in a startup, pre-seed uh, or seed that shares shares risk. So, but mobilizing this uh, this money that that's there, this is something that's really hard because it needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of organization and trust. And I don't know if this is really 
um, yeah, it has not been tackled in Austria so far, but it's something that, yeah, if not us, who would do it? That's a question for me. And fascinating and, and idea I want to uh, mm. an idea I want to bring to the table. Fascinating input. So uh, we have 15 minutes left. We know that uh, we have identified a blank space between uh, the traditional banking business and, and, and the grant uh, business. Uh, we have here uh, an input uh, telling us, yes, there are rich people out there, semi-rich in the case of uh, Switzerland, according to our Austrian uh, neighbors. Why not involve them uh, uh, better? And I will then give this question to uh, uh, Stefan Fischer uh, in uh, in the next round. But before I do that, uh, our uh, representative from uh, Veneto, you did not have the opportunity for uh, the second round. So what are your ideas to fill this uh, blank uh, space? Um, well, um, as, uh, as uh, Alessandra said before, we uh, we manage, we provide to SMEs of the Regione Veneto uh, some kinds of uh, tools, you know, financial instruments. And uh, um, in time, we change it, uh, these tools adapting to the economic uh, context of, uh, uh, of the whole world. So, um, for example, uh, when we manage the found to uh, to facilitate uh, investment in innovation um, it was uh, uh, an action uh, of uh, the regional operational program of uh, uh, the programming period uh, 2007-2013 the economic context was totally different and uh, uh, that tool uh, was a mixed form with uh, uh, funds of uh, the banks and funds of the uh, Veneto region, so public funds, pri uh, private funds, intending uh, bank funds. Um, it started with uh, uh, an half of uh, that fund was uh, with zero interest, the public uh, resource, and uh, the other half of the loan was with uh, a maximum interest tax um, rate. But uh, going on, uh, the, the economic context changed, and uh, that uh, um, rate was too high to become useful for enterprise for SMEs, and we had to change uh, the regulation of that fund of that uh, instrument and lower it. Uh, now the the situation is uh, uh, again different. Our tool to um, to help. Uh, for example, in uh, SMEs that had uh, problems for the pandemic situation is uh, a loan uh, with uh, uh, zero interest without the participation of the bank and also with uh, a capital grant. So um, how we can uh, cover the blank uh, all that uh, SMEs can uh, uh, find to invest, uh, we have many. Uh, there are many uh, instruments and uh, many subjects. We have to find time by time the best tool, get it in touch with SMEs, uh, put it in touch uh, the policymakers with the private investors and the, uh, the SMEs, and provide uh, time by time the best the best tool. Um, on our experience, uh, uh, we manage uh, uh, a financial instrument that was uh, uh, the combination of, uh, uh, of um, a private resources uh, for a loan, a public resources with uh, another half of a loan uh, and uh, uh, adding uh, a contribution that was uh, uh, also replicated uh, in, uh, in other Italian regions and was uh, taken as a best practice uh, uh, in another uh, European project uh, for uh, the Interreg uh, Central Europe um, to uh, try to uh, purpose it to in, in other situations for other countries and for other uh, SMEs. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Best, the best thing we can do is to, to listen, to get in touch with SMEs and uh, um, uh, report to the policymaker 
which is the Veneto region, because we are not uh, a policymaker, report our idea, ideas and uh, adapt to the contest uh, uh, time by time. Sure, sure. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rampin. Uh, interesting also to know that from your side of uh, uh, Veneto Sviluppo, you also have experience with um, uh, setting up mixed funds mixed funds to to fill this uh, this blank space as uh, was uh, the case of uh, uh, Valérie Rocher Melin and in the chat we have a lot of interest for this uh, model so um, after giving the uh, word to uh, Mr. Fisher I would like to give uh, it back to you uh, Ms. Rocher Melin to maybe uh, dig a bit deeper into uh, how have you succeeded in actually putting uh, this mixed fund uh, uh, together and what would your recommendations be for other regions to do to do so but first mr fisher how do you get uh, our semi-rich swiss friends involved in these activities and maybe you would also have additional uh, ideas to fill this blank space sure. so um the the investors in my personal network always complain uh, that they are not interested in, in the small investments of of less than a million um so so uh, and and uh, uh, that's why why Michael Kirschbaum's idea is is so 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 good because combining uh, 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 let's say investors small investors into a into a larger uh, structure would definitely be a, a good idea. And as I learned recently, again from 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 an, an, an applicant for the EIC accelerator, that can be done today with tokenization, and we can we can solve the problem of of uh, dilution and so on. So so technically, that's not not such a big problem. And the fund to set up a fund, yes, takes some time, but uh, the, it, it was, wouldn't be the first time to 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 set up have a fund. So combining small in, in, in investments into, into something bigger is the right way to go. Uh, I, I sneaked into this panel discussion by, by showing you an article that I wrote uh, some time ago in, in, in LinkedIn about uh, the, the Swiss innovation economy or the, the, the outlook for a Swiss innovation economy. And it doesn't have to be a Swiss innovation economy. It can be a European one or, or even a worldwide one because there's clearly a gap in, uh, in the exploitation of intellectual property. Uh, uh, by actually combining uh, IP uh, such as patents into into something more uh, uh, valuable, you 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 really create value and you really allow or you create an in investment instrument or a financial instrument with that, and um, and that would also give uh, smaller investors the possibility to invent into invest into the innovation economy. So um, again, uh, combining uh, small uh, uh, elements of a, a small financial instruments in something bigger or, or smaller IP assets into something bigger uh, and allowing uh, uh, universities, individual inventors to contribute to that would, would, uh, would probably be a, a good thing for the, for the uh, whole of Europe. Uh, let's just look quickly at, at, at the universities. They create the, the PhD students and, and researchers create uh, patents, and then uh, when they found their own startup, they have to buy back their own their, their, their IP they developed at the university. Uh, that's okay. That's legal, and this is how it how it works. Uh, but the question is, uh, shouldn't shouldn't the universities be be more proactive and really uh, fill gaps in the IP landscape instead of just uh, selling the IP back to the inventors. This is this is really fascinating, Mr. Fisher, and I actually wanted to uh, uh, bring this topic in uh, uh, at at a later stage. But you're uh, of course correct to uh, to bring it in now because time is flying. Um, but it is very much related to uh, this question of uh, uh, combining small investors into something bigger. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you're completely right that also at the level of IP, uh, what we have is that we have a completely fragmented situation where uh, IP is only um, uh, traded uh, on, on the basis of individual uh, patents, for example, and it's, yes. it's even institutionalized in this way. And so what needs to be done exactly as with uh, investment in general uh, is to try to find solutions to find to create an efficient uh, financial market actually for, for IP. And this idea of grouping IP according to, to, 
uh, value chains to value management uh, to, to create an efficient and interesting market uh, uh, for, for IP, I think, is something that uh, will certainly also be taken up as a recommendation out of this uh, discussion. And I would be very interested to uh, hear Mr. Upfold's also perspective on that because you're working closely with uh, startups. Um, so uh, um, I, I'm always introducing the next one so you can prepare. I, I will give that to you in a second. First, um, on the topic of um, combining small investors into something bigger, uh, you have this good practice and uh, even best practice uh, here, uh, Ms. Valérie rocher How have you succeeded in doing this? Because all the other regions are uh, very much interested in, in knowing how to set up such mixed funds. Well, actually, we started small. That's why I'm. That's what I'm. I was saying in my uh, presentation. We started with only 12 million uh, euros uh, from ERGF and 12 million euros from uh, the region. So we just wanted to to, to check that uh, it, it could work. Um, then we worked on creating a very strong network of uh, public and private um, partners, uh, always in the region, South region. Um, because the partners, uh, they, they talked uh, about us and to the, the, the companies. Uh, we also created a very strong net network of private investors. I wanted to, to say to Michael that I was very interested about uh, his intervention, intervention because uh, we have uh, more than 100 private uh, investors. Uh, they are our partners. We, we know them very well. And uh, we have traditional VCs. Uh, we have also um, uh, business angels. But we have what we're, you were talking about, family offices. And that's very interesting because uh, they have some money. They, they want to invest. They don't want to spend time to find the deals, but uh, so they trust us, and uh, we make uh, a lot of deals with family offices. So you are correct; it's a very um, good way to find some private uh, money for the companies. And then we made uh, um, a lot of communication. We made a lot of uh, roadshow uh, roadshows around uh, the region to meet the companies. Uh, and also we created a club, um, like an entrepreneur club uh, for uh, our portfolio. So now we have uh, more than 100 members. And then another thing which is very important, we, we have a very strong relationship with the with the ERGF team here in the South region. Uh, it's based on trust and professionalism. It's very important because what we uh, created from about 10 years ago, I mean, it's with the, the, the FEDER ERGF, they are very important and also the, the region, of course. A very short follow-up question uh, to, to bridge to what uh, Mr. Fisher has introduced before. What is your uh, involvement with uh, intellectual property uh, in, in, in this? And would you be interested or have you maybe already taken first steps uh, in an initiative like uh, the one presented by Mr. Fisher uh, to move towards a, mo a more efficient uh, financial market for uh, IPR? I think the question got lost. Sorry, sorry. Shall I repeat the, que the follow up yes, question? Please. Okay, yes, please. sorry about that. Uh, I just want, I was just interested uh, in, in learning from you uh, how are you uh, uh, involving intellectual property in your activities and whether you would be uh, interested or have already taken steps in the direction of what Mr. Fisher has presented, creating more efficient markets. Uh, for IPR um, by moving from individual IP uh, to grouped uh, IP according to value chains and value management uh, to create more efficient markets there? Uh, well, yes, IP is uh, something uh, very, uh, uh, it's quite mandatory uh, for us. Um, it's uh, something we we work uh, with the companies on. And um, we, when we started, uh, we only f uh, financed uh, innovative companies. So IP was key. Uh, now we also finance uh, some industrial companies or services companies. So it's not mandatory to, to work uh, with IP, but uh, 
when we made the, the um, uh, when we look at the all the, the, the portfolio, we can see that uh, the companies um, which succeed have a high level of uh, IP. So we're working with uh, public um, uh, public structures, uh, which helps uh, for IP. So it's uh, it's very important point to, for the success of our of our portfolio. All right, Mr. Upfold, what is your perspective? Would you agree that uh, we ha we are struggling with actually monetizing intellectual property, and that something needs to be done also in this direction? I agree absolutely, and that's something we see. I think all of us see uh, over years and years. It's something we saw even 20 years ago. And on the one hand side, we have our big companies who who yeah, keep their the patents, and on the other side. We have a lot of universities, um, and at the end of the day, maybe this comment is not very helpful, but uh, if you have so many startup pitches like I do, you start to, to look at your partners like at the startups, and you realize you need a business plan, you need a, a model, a business canvas, or something else, but at the end of the day, you need a team, 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 it's a people's business. And instead of Baden-Württemberg, we have universities who really make a good job on bringing out their patents into the startups. And we see universities who there's still way to go. But it's not so much regulation, it's, it's really more people business. And um, once again, uh, maybe one thing back to Austria, to, to Michael Gerstbaum. Um, that's a missing link. Uh, I, yeah, pretty much the same approach, bringing not only companies and small business into our program, or I think they have more or less the same portfolio like, like, like in France, we see family office VCs, but we also see new business angels with smaller pockets because our program allows uh, co-investment from around about 30,000 euros. So that's the amount you can afford as a mid-sized business angel, so to say. And we have an accelerator who can guide even unexperienced people who wants to start and make first experiences. But your question was patents. Uh, I agree totally. But I don't have the solutions. I see the problem. <laughs> that that's already a good start if the problem is identified, uh, Mr. Fisher. I'm sure you have cert certain solutions and also some uh, inputs for uh, the other panelists on on what can be done to to help. Well, there there must be the the, the courage to see uh, uh, what, what the the value of 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 IP and in and and create. Um, uh, give give startups, individual invest inventors, uh, schools and 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 universities the possibility to monetize their their uh, their invention, their 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 patents. That would be my my approach to to uh, to um, because um, already ten years ago uh, uh, um, that approach was 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 uh, taken by by the company Intellectual Ventures in the U.S. and they have become the biggest. Uh, uh, patent owner uh, in the world by by uh, by doing this, and and there's still still a potential for that in Europe by by just uh, uh, having the courage to combine uh, IP from different universities, from different inventors into something valuable. Uh, there are examples in the past where this worked quite well. For example, the MPEG uh, com video compression standard that everybody's using, it it only was successful because it was combined into into a, a license that can actually be sold. You cannot buy a license from 20 patent holders. You must combine that into something that can be actually uh, bought and, and uh, uh, the MPEG-4 standard succeeded because of that. And, and uh, another example, why, why did uh, 3D printing uh, only succeed in, let's say, 2014, 2015? S simply because the patents ran out and everybody had access uh, to 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 the to the IP and before that nobody was able to actually buy the necessary licenses from 20, 30, 40 different patent holders. So that really uh, prevented uh, this this technology to to come main uh, become main, mainstream. So that's my my input on this. Nice Mr. Kirschbaumer, uh, yeah. yes, I, I see you raising your hand because I'm sure you have yeah. an interesting perspective on that as well. I don't know if it's interesting. I have more a micro perspective. I mean, you're talking about the macro perspective of, of the IP market. I I see, I don't know, maybe that's only an Austrian thing, but I see with most of my 
clients that are spin-offs of universities, the universities are reluctant to give them the IP. They grant them uh, an exclusive license, uh, the startup, but they, they, they don't hand over the, the IP to, to, to the inventor, which for the university seems to be a good deal, but in reality it's not. And it's also a bad deal for the startup because yes. an investor says, you don't have the, the IP, you only have a license. I don't have any guarantee. So this, this is a, a real problem, but the, I don't know why the Austrian universities are a little bit reluctant to do that. And uh, as you say in German, they're shooting in their own foot because they prevent the, the, the spin-off from really getting good investments. Uh, and then they don't make any money out of the, the license agreement with them. So I think this is uh, a little bit of a lose-lose situation mm -hmm. there. Maybe one has to talk to the IP manager of the Austrian universities about that problem. Maybe somebody from outside, because you know, you're from Austria, you, you talk to these people and uh, your, 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 your opinion is not uh, very, uh, very valuable. As, yeah, as well, you all know. You can invite me and I will tell them uh, a few things about, about okay. how no, to... Okay, no, I will do that as soon as we great, yeah. get into another discussion about that. I mean, we've had plenty of them. That's great, mm -hmm. a very concrete... And afterwards, send him to Baden-Württemberg. A very concrete <laughs> outcome of this uh, of this uh, second panel here uh, with with a potential uh, visit uh, of uh, uh, Switzerland to uh, Styria and to Baden-Württemberg to work on this construction site that is IP and I certainly uh, will put uh, intellectual property rights uh, also on, on on the big challenges uh, that are uh, ahead uh, on the way to creating uh, a more efficient uh, financial environment for SMEs in their innovation uh, projects. So I'm really very grateful to uh, having um, heard your inputs on IP as well and having had the opportunity to give a very short um, uh, round of discussion about that uh, with Baden-Württemberg, uh, France, Italy and uh, Austria here. Unfortunately, there are so many topics that I would like uh, to dig uh, much deeper into now. Uh, we have only been able to scratch uh, on the surface uh, uh, a little bit uh, uh, on what the challenges ahead are. What I think we can say uh, to conclude uh, this panel here is that Similarly, uh, as with the uh, potential of cross-regional cooperation, also for the combination of public and private funding uh, and funds, there is a lot uh, of opportunity out there and there are programs out there that now start to combine uh, this. Uh, there is a lot going on in the startup world and we have a very uh, nice insight here from Baden-Württemberg that I recommend all uh, the regions to take a look at. We also have uh, the approach of these uh, mixed funds uh, that we had as uh, had as a keynote uh, uh, represented here by uh, Région Sud uh, Invest uh, with, with these mixed funds that uh, raised a lot of interest from the other regions and this is an, uh, an element that will help to fill this uh, blank space between banking and uh, public uh, grants, an experience also shared by uh, Veneto Svilupo, so certainly a way uh, forward. And we have a very concrete idea to actually dig deeper into this in more bilateral talks uh, from uh, our participant from Austria, so this is very much appreciated. What we will do on our side, since we have a scratch on the surface of many topics now, uh, identified status quo, identified a lot of challenges, both for cross-regional cooperation and for private-public uh, combinations, but also heard a lot of ideas for the future, good ideas, um, success factors uh, of best practices. What we will do is discuss that internally, feed into our uh, policy um, uh, dialogue process within uh, the Be Ready Alps uh, project and hopefully get back to all of you, uh, the participants and uh, our very interesting speakers uh, very soon uh, with uh, our uh, conclusions and recommendations based on what we have been able to learn today. I think this is the most important communication from my side at the end of the second panel. We have learned really a lot. For me personally, it was extremely interesting to get the insights uh, from our uh, first panelists on cross-region cooperation. 
all the possibilities that we have there and the opportunities. And now on the second panel uh, to learn about this, uh, uh, these ideas for filling a blank space uh, between public and private uh, with better combinations uh, of small investments with big investors, public money, private money, um, uh, tackling challenges that we have on the IP market extremely fascinating we learned a lot and i would like to thank all the panelists also of this uh, second panel uh, mr upfold from van württemberg uh, mr rampin uh, and colleague from veneto sviluppo mr fisher from uh, oil research uh, switzerland and mr kerschbaumer uh, from styria uh, for having uh, given us the opportunity to learn so much uh, with you uh, it was very stimulating and it will feed our policy dialogue in very um, uh, interesting uh, way Big thanks also to Ms. Uh, Valérie rocher for her keynote. Sorry again that it did not uh, technically work out until the end of your presentation, but as you have seen from the interest from the other regions, your message went through and the interest uh, of other regions is there uh, and they all have your contact details if they would like to set up something similar in their uh, regions. This being said, uh, that would be the conclusion from uh, my side. I would like uh, to uh, thank the organizers of this policy table from uh, Rising uh, Süd and from Veneto Innovazione as lead partner of the Be Ready Alps uh, project. Thank you very much for this uh, uh, interesting opportunity to discuss these uh, interesting topics. And we will be back with updates from the Be Ready Alps project as soon as possible. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you very much for your participation and hope to see you uh, soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.